I want to talk to you for a minute about uh, paying attention to definitions. A lot of times I'll have students in trigonometry come up to me and ask me a question, and I'll ask them, uh, well, what is the sine of theta? And they won't know what it is. They don't know the definition for the trig functions. So since you're in calculus, I want to ask you a question. What's the definition for the derivative? So over here, if I have y is equal to f of x, y is some function of x, and let's just assume it's a nice uh, function like a polynomial function. You ask yourself, well, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? Well, if I use this notation, y prime, or I use this notation, dy dx, or I use this notation, f prime of x, the definition for the derivative of y with respect to x is a limit. It's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So that's the definition for the derivative. The derivative is a limit. Now you might say to yourself, well, I thought it was velocity, or I thought it was acceleration, or something like that. Those are interpretations of the derivative. When somebody says to you, what's the derivative of a function, it's this limit. The limit is h goes to 0, f of x plus h uh, minus f of x, all divided by h. Sometimes you write the, the, this limit this way, the limit as x goes to a, as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a, all divided by x minus a. That's another way to look at the derivative. But whether you use this definition or this definition, they both amount to the same thing. They're limits. So if I say that, let's say s is distance that's a function of time, right here I have a function distance as a function of time, and I find the derivative ds dt, well, that turns out to be the speed of whatever's moving with according to that function. But that's not the definition of the derivative, it's just an interpretation. If I was to say then take this speed right here and differentiate with respect to t again, I might get acceleration or the magnitude of acceleration. But again, that's an interpretation of the derivative. In business, if I had cost as a function of the number of items that I was producing, and I differentiated that, I found c prime of x. Whatever that turns out to be is called marginal cost. It's the cost to produce one more item when you're already producing x items. So that's marginal cost. Again, an interpretation of the derivative. Uh, if I had volume as a function of the radius of some sphere, let's say volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, later on when you get to related rates, you'll see that we can differentiate what's called implicitly and differentiate these things with respect to time. So I could have dv dt would turn out to be 4 pi r squared dr dt. So in this case, this derivative right here turns out to be a function of r and also dr dt. It's a function of another derivative. But all of these things right here are interpretations of the derivative. This is the definition right here. So what I want to do is go over here a little bit farther and take a look at the graph of y equals f of x and see if we can't get a visual interpretation of this derivative. So if I was to go, let's say, on the x-axis to some point x, then I know if I go up to the graph right here that the height of that line is f of x. So now I want to move a distance away from x. Let's say that distance is h to another point on the x-axis, x plus h. Now if I go from that point up to the graph, I get f of x plus h. So that's f of x plus h. So what does f of x plus h minus f of x all over h look like? Well, that's simply f of x plus h minus f of x. That's f of x plus h. That's f of x. So if I take this and subtract this, I get this length right here, f of x plus h minus f of x. This distance right here is the same as this distance, so that's h. So what is f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h? 
It's simply the slope of the line that goes right through this line segment right here. So m, the slope of this line right here, is f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. So what do I mean when I say I take the limit as h goes to 0 of that quantity? I've got this quantity right here. And according to my definition, I want to find the limit as h goes to 0 of that quantity. That's just the same as taking this point right here and sliding it towards this point. And the whole time that you do that, keeping track of the slope of this line right here. So as, as h gets smaller and smaller, I may end up over here. Then I have the slope of that line until finally h goes to 0 in the limit, and I have the slope of the line tangent to the graph of y equal f of x at that point x right there. But again, this is a visual interpretation of the derivative. The derivative itself is this limit that we talked about over here, either one of these two things. So if somebody asks you what is a derivative or what's the derivative, what are you doing in calculus when you're differentiating functions, the definition of the derivative is that limit.